there's a sense, I think, that she wants to carry on doing the work that she intended to do within the royal family. I suppose the question mark over it all is, can you be as impactful, if not more impactful, outside of the monarchy than inside it? People will be wanting to know what are they doing for all of these millions and how is it manifesting itself. She's got that fame, but what she needs now is the accomplishment that goes with it. It's hard to know for sure exactly what Meghan wants to achieve in the next 10 years. Obviously, a lot has been made of the idea that she has got these political ambitions and could she one day um, run as the Democratic presidential candidate. I think people who know her aren't ruling that out, but aren't ruling it in either. And obviously, as a new mum to a second child, she's probably not in any great rush to go into public life because she's got her own immediate family. And indeed, one of the reasons for makes it was that Harry and Meghan wanted to prioritise immediate family over the family firm, so to speak. Equally, we know that they've got fingers in a few pies with the Netflix deal, Spotify, the podcast for Archwell. Should we start? No? Ladies first? No, say it, because I think it sounds really nice with your accent. Archwell Audio. I mean... Megan has written her own children's book, Harry's now penning an autobiography, so there's been a lot of announcements, but we still need to find out, well, where are they going to put the substance into some of the stuff that they've suggested they're going to do in the future? Once you have access or a voice that people are willing to listen to, with that comes a lot of responsibility. I suppose in the first instance, they've achieved this quest to separate powers from the royal family and set up shop in the US. The audience now is on first name terms with this couple, so it's Harry and Meghan. They sort of need no introduction or no further explanation. And that means that collectively, they've achieved a level of global fame, which is pretty much the top of the tree. I suppose there is this sense that Meghan wants to be this kind of champion of progressive thinking. Some people have been a bit ungenerous about that and sort of nicknamed her, I think at one point, Woko Ono, saying that she's championing woke causes while tearing Harry away from his family. A more positive spin on things might be that she sees herself as being a champion for mixed race communities, equally for women. Uh, she was an advocate for women at the UN and therefore has got a voice on a kind of feminist platform. Megan has had a number of roles now, actress, producer, author. And I think as she moves forwards, there's this need, I think, to put some substance behind some of the suggestion of what she's going to do. And I think it's widely acknowledged that she is quite a powerful orator and that she speaks very well. I remember somebody telling me about how she could just absorb a brief and look at a speech once and be able to deliver it word for word. What? And that's obviously a skill that she's gained in her acting training, let alone any of the philanthropic work she's done. Your voice is a reminder that you matter, because you do, and you deserve to be heard. In a way, I think that Meghan is modelling herself on some of her heroes, be it sort of Serena Williams or Michelle Obama. She's got that fame, but what she needs now is the accomplishment that goes with it. You can talk about what you're going to do, but you actually have to go and do it. And that's how you create a sort of legacy around you. So when it looks forward to 10 years' time, you know, who knows where Meghan might be? It all depends on what she does to fill that time. Look at the Invictus Games. You can talk the talk, but if you actually do it and produce something that's widely acclaimed to be a good idea, that's been a success, and has helped to break down barriers or stigma when it comes to disability, then everyone's going to applaud you. It's for the same reason that initiatives like Head Together were a success, because they actually did manage to change the conversation on mental health. So if the Sussexes are able to achieve those sorts of things over in America and really exact change, then that's great. If, however, there's a sense that they're continuing this narrative that is largely speaking to themselves and is overly self-indulgent and not enough about the people that they serve, then they're going to encounter problems. I suppose the point is that people can say who they want to be, but people only become the people that they become if they've done things. People see through it very quickly if it's all talk and no action. And there's been criticism of the couple, you know, they come out with a load of word salad which doesn't mean much to anyone. So I suppose people do need to see initiatives, but they don't need to look far back in the past. You know, Harry doesn't need to reflect too far to see where things went right for him. And things went right for him in the army because he got involved and he was one of the troops and he did things and he went out and fought in Afghanistan and equally with the Invictus Games and with some of their charitable initiatives. You know, when they've got stuck in and rolled their sleeves up and really engaged with the subject matter, then they've 
proved hugely successful. So I think there's been a kind of a lot of expectation built around what the couple are going to do next. Now they just have to go and do it and hope that it's a success.